This is chapter three, selections, programming exercise two, game, add three numbers. So we're going to randomly generate three single digits integer and prompt the user to enter the sum of these three integers. If the user enters the correct sum, display true. If the user enters the incorrect sum, display false and the correct sum. All right, so the tricky part in this exercise is learning how to generate a random number. And well, it's actually not that hard because Java has a class called random. And in this random class, it has a, uh, a function that helps you generate the random number. So you don't have to go off and cr try to create one yourself for now, right? Instead, we're just going to use this random class to do it. And here's a little small example of what we're going to be using or how we're going to use it. Now, to use this random class, we have to uh, declare it, uh, the random class, the variable equals new random, right? And this right here, parentheses for this, to create this object here, this new random object. Now, with this new random object, it has a function in this random class called next int. Now this next int rand dot next int, which is it is calling a function right here with this dot operator right here, right? It's saying, hey, generate me a random number, any number between zero to the max size of this random number. So what happens is any number could be generated from zero to the max uh, size for integer could be generated and stored into this variable called random number. But let's say you only want to generate a number up to 100. So if you just want to generate up to 100, you could say, uh, you could place the number right here, 100, and it'll generate any number between 0 to 99, and not 100, just 0 to 99. But what if you don't want to generate a 0? right? You want to generate 1 to 100. So you could put 101 and that will generate 0 to 100, but the 0 is still there. What you could do next is simply just say whatever it generates, 0 to 99, just add a 1 to it. So if it ever generates a 0, you add a 1 and it'll become a 1. Ever generate a 99, add a 1 to it, it becomes 100. If you want a 99, then you have to get lucky and generate 98 plus 1 and therefore it's 99. All right, so hopefully all of this right here makes sense. This first one generates any number from zero to, oh, I believe the max, uh, or max minus one of int. This generate any number from zero to 99, and this generate any number from zero to 99, and then you plus a one to it, which makes it one to 100. So now that we are able to know how to generate any random number, well, all we have to do in our exercise is generate it and solve for it. We will create three variables. Let's just say we call it random number one, two, and uh, three. This is supposed to be three. Uh, and then you could generate uh, any single digit you want, right? Single digit as in zero to nine. In this case, for example, I'm just saying, hey, I want to generate any number from zero up to five. So zero to four, zero to 14, and zero to 24. Then we take all of this, right? That number stored into this variable we call random number, and we add it. We add number uh, random number one, two, and three to get the sum. After we get the sum, time to do the final test, all right? To check our math. We're gonna ask the user, hey, can you solve this and enter the sum of random number one, two, and three? Add it, and then enter a sum for us. If it is, um, uh, whatever number it is, we're going to store it into uh, FA input that you enter. And what's left is to test two possible cases, right? So this is a game. Remember, this is a game that asks the user to solve the sum of three randomly generated number. The, uh, if the sum is correct, then we say, hey, you did it correctly, right? And if it's wrong, you will say, okay, you didn't do it correctly. So how do we do that? We create two cases for, for the user. The case one is if the sum, which of random number one, two, and three, is equal to the input that the user gave, right? The user calculated and then enter input, 
If it's correct, then you display, okay, true, you got it right. And then there's the other possibility, case two. If the sum does not equal to the user's input, if it is one plus two plus three and the user enters zero, well, one plus two plus three is six, is it is not zero, it is false. So therefore it is not equal, does not equal the user input and we display, hey, you got it wrong. And that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, and we're gonna do that in this exercise. It's gonna be quite simple. So let's say we have int number, uh, random number one, two, and three. We're gonna have sum, and then we're gonna have user input. And then, let's see why. All right. Now, we're going to create our random number. We've got to have the random class. Let's give it a variable name, rand equals new random. And what we're going to do is generate a random number for random number one, two, and three equals rand dot next int. We'll do that for two and three. All right. So now, to show you system dot out dot print random number one and as you can see I didn't put any number in here yet so we're gonna get some very random large number all right actually let me uh this, oh, we're gonna actually get negative two. That's another thing that we have to worry about. Let me make sure that negative don't appear. So as you can see, these are very, very random large number. So let's try again. Once again, negative, negative, and a large number. Now let's do, uh, make them all 10. All right, so this right now should generate a number between zero to nine. All right, there we go, no more negative, and we get numbers that are not greater than uh, than 10, or 10 and greater. You get some number between zero to nine. All right, it'll always be zero to nine. Okay, now let's see. What we're gonna do is we're going to solve for this. We're going to say now the sum of this is basically going to be number one plus two plus three. Okay, so we're going to say something like this right here. got here is basically uh, uh, 6 plus 3 plus 7 6 plus 3 plus 7 is 16 right so that's correct now we're gonna actually ask the user that what is the sum to the following numbers hmm. <laughs> let me see how that looks like okay what's the sum to the following numbers and we get 9 plus 2 plus 5 and then we could enter a number right here all right so to enter a number let's create a scanner input equals new scanner system.in okay and that will be user input equals input dot next int so we're going to take that number and we're going to store it in here so we're going to run that let's see if we're doing this correctly what's the sum to the following numbers and then it'll be 2 plus 7 plus 2 so i'll say uh 11 
enter and there we go that 11 should now be stored into this variable called user input all right now here is where we do our case so there are two cases uh, where user gets it right then display true user gets the sum incorrect incorrect then display false user gets then display true. All right, so these are the two cases. So let's start with case one. If input, no, I mean, if sum equals uh, user input, then we're gonna say system.out.print uh, instead of saying true, I'll just say correct. If sum does not equal user input, the incorrect, it should be. Uh, what was it? Uh, sum. All right, so we're gonna uh, test that out, see if that's correct. All right, so let's try for case one first. What is the sum to the following numbers? Seven plus one plus six. So let's say 14, and there we go, it's correct. So this case pass, and this uh, pass too. The reason I say it's a pass is because it says if it does not equal it, then display it. But if it, so that means does not if, so what I'm trying to say is if sum, which is 14, does not equal user input, which is 14, then display it. But since sum equals user input, then it doesn't display. So what should appear is if sum, if I enter 13 and 14 does not equal 13, then it display. But since uh, I wrote the correct answer, 14 equals 14, this will not display, which means I wrote this correctly, right? So a lot of people would always get this confused because of the does not equal. Uh, it confuses the user when the user expects, if the right here is true, then um, display this or run whatever's inside the if statement. So if it's not equal, which means if it, if this and this, one is true and one is false, and that's not equal, then it'll display, all right? So if you do get confused by this, play around with this and try to uh, test it out and you will be able to understand it better. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it one more time and I'm gonna try to get this to run and this to not run, all right? So this both has to be equal for this to run. This both have to, one be equal, uh, one to be uh, a different number than the other for it to for this to run right here. So basically right here it says 9 plus 5 plus 1. So if I want to uh, have this display, then I'll enter 15. If I want this to display, I want to enter anything but 15. So let's say I enter 14. And it'll say incorrect, it should be 15. So bam, this gets displayed. Now there's another thing that you could do. Instead of writing two if statement, you could write if, and then you could write uh, else, and get rid of this completely. If this is not true, therefore this is true. If this is true, then you do not have to display this. So let's show that. All right, so what is one plus three plus seven? So if I want this display, you just enter 11 and bam, it'll just say correct. If this is true, display this and there's no need to display this. That's exactly what this means right here. All right, and then we run it one last time. We get six plus one plus one. So that answer is eight, but we want the else to appear. So we say 10. 
So now it's what happened is say, if this sum is equals equals to user input, that's correct, display this. If this is incorrect, there's no need to check. Immediately display this. That's exactly what it means, all right? If sum, which is eight, equals equals 10, then display correct. If it's not correct, don't display anything. Instantly go to the else statement right here and display this. Now, what if you have another else, right? Well, you can't, you can't have another else because what this else here says is, if right here is false, instantly display this. So if you instantly display this, you can't display something else. But if you do, you're going to have to do an if else, and you're going to have to do another check. Sum does not equal user input. But something like this right here won't really work. Oops. Uh, right, there we go. That's the correct logical way. Because this right here, if this don't run, then this will run, else this will run. Well, this logic right here is false. That's because uh, right here, this case will be, it'll be one or the other. Of course, uh, there are scenarios where, um, where we could bypass this, right? Uh, but that's really tough. So right here, you, you're gonna have a logical error where it'll almost never reach this else case. Hopefully that makes sense, but if it doesn't, I will definitely go further into this in other exercise. But for now, just know there are two possible way, uh, three possible way of writing this, if, else, if, right? Means the same thing. If this is not correct, if this is correct, display this, else check this too, all right? Uh, before I just did elf, it instantly will display without checking, but with the else if, it'll do a check. So if both is false, then it will display nothing at all. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And that will be it for this exercise.